shop. We're back on project 252. And I'm sorry, uh, did I jump around a little bit from videos on how to do stumps or different, you know, like the golf course one, but it takes time to do these things. And, you know, I work all week. I come home tired. I like to have my time off too. But on weekends, I come into the shop and I do maintenance. And so we're back on Project 252, and a guy kept asking me about it. And, boy, I didn't want to make this video. And the only reason I didn't want to make this video is it's it, it's nasty work. God, I hate hydraulic fluid. So, this one's about changing all the fluids in your 252. Or I think it used to be in a model before, it would have been about a 222. And, and this applies almost to any, any machine you got, okay? But on the Vermeers especially. If I catch you taking your machine to a shop to change these simple fluids, I, I'm going to slap your hand. You know, because this is something you should do and you shouldn't be sending out to shop, paying some shop $100 plus an hour to do the simple thing. Plus, then they're going to mark up your parts. Then, you know, they're going to mark up the fluids. So, this is so cheap. Let me let me turn this around and show you. I, you know, I know people from different parts of the world are watching this and say, well, I don't have that brand auto parts store. I go to a place called O'Reilly's, and I told you I get basically kind of a mechanics fleet discount. So, the hydraulic filter and the oil filter and the fuel filter, that's just three filters. And I bought the top-notch filters. Now, before you argue me about this brand is better than this brand or whatever, I bought a fleet for fleet services the top filters that you, we use in the fleet, okay? And, and I only got $12.43. Okay, now that's without the fluids, okay? Now, for engine oil on the 27 horse, some of you guys, you know, you got, I don't care what brand you run, the most important thing to life of that engine is to, to change the oil, okay? It's an air-cooled engine. I've used this over 25 years, and out of one of my machines, my first 252, I got over 1,800 hours at a, I think back then, it, it may have had a 25 horsepower on it. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. It was so long ago, 30 years ago, or whatever. Anyway, but I was running Walmart full synthetic 10W30 in it. All right, and it's the cheapest synthetic you're going to find out there. And it's, you go on YouTube, there's people that test that oil. There's a guy called Farm Project, I think it is. He does a very, I mean, uh, it's, it's freaking fantastic test, cold climate test, heat test, viscosity test. He does all these tests on all the major oils and stuff. And he has that oil in it, and he comes out in one of the top oils, you know, and, and a, Tell you the truth, I was a hazmat captain in, in the oil refineries right near me, and I knew the chemist there, and they said, all we do is different, the same oil coming down the line. We add different additives to where the manufacturer specs it out. So the base oil is the same. It's just everybody has a different, like, you know, formula or whatever. It's just a little this, a little that, a little that, to call it different, you know. And there's suspicions that that actually might be mobile one. I'm just saying, you know, that's just gossip down the road or whatever. No one's going to tell me the truth, truth, because they'd be out of a job. So, let's go back to the machine. If you've never done this, when you open up your lid, your fuel tank's there, which you know. This one says hydraulic oil, all right? And that hydraulic oil runs all your hydraulics to where up and down, left to right, okay? Runs runs the, the gearing for you to go forward and backwards, all right, and this here is your hydraulic pump, this small one here. And I've showed you that on past videos. It's run by a belt and a pulley, and it runs to that. Those, these little bitty hydraulic pulleys here, I mean, excuse me, pumps, are, um, they're, they're able to be rebuilt. There's a rebuild kit for them. Maybe one day down the road I'll rebuild one. This one doesn't need it, okay? So 
first thing you're going to do, and I'm going to show you here my nasty pile here. One of the other videos you've seen is when I bought this machine, luckily they wrote on it, this filter was changed of 414 of 2015. Okay, so that's a good habit too. If you can, write on your filter what, when you change it and what hours, okay? So that filter you just saw there goes right there, spins on to here. All right, so the brand I'm using, the Fleet brand that I'm using is Wix. All right, and this is their top one right here. All right, and it's a Wix 51551. This is on the 252, all right? Uh, I don't know on that new 292 or whatever the newer model, that's something that you know, someone, someone in the group or someone on the page, if you do have a cross-reference, put it down there, help the guys out, okay? So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spin this on. I'll put a little hydraulic fluid. But before I do that, let's talk about, we talked about the engine oil. Now we got to talk about the hydraulic fluid. Listen, some of you guys may not want to watch this video because, you know, you're like, oh, who doesn't know how to do this? There's plenty of guys that don't know how to do this. All right. I go to my farm supply place and this is AW46. Don't worry about the brand. The AW46 is what's important. That's the weight. Like, you know, engine oils come in different weights. Like this one says 10W30. Hydraulic fluid comes in different weights. Years ago, when I had my machine and I was young, I blew a line. I called Vermeer. I says, hey, I'm out in blah, blah, blah land. What can I use to put in there? Oh, you can only use Vermeer Gold, which Vermeer was had a proprietary, you know, basically, you know, their hydraulic fluid. They didn't make it. They just repackaged it in a deal. All right, and they were telling you, you had to run that. You had to run that. So I had an old man at the, the parts counter that I was really good friends with. I called back and said, hey, listen, can I talk to Charlie? Charlie used to be the mechanic out there, too. And then he got older and became a parts guy. He goes, Adam, you in a pinch? I said, yeah. He said, you didn't hear it from me. But basically, the weight that you're going to be running is... 46 all right and different parts of the country now you can go to your manual whether it's abandoned or whatever and it'll have a viscosity chart and, and that'll tell you by temperature all right so basically what that's telling you is by the temperature range where you're working or whatever like say you're in, in, in some free in a desert cli climate it may recommend that you go up to 68 you know i've got 68 over here for a different piece of machinery. And then maybe you're up north and you're always working in a cold climate. Right? So it may tell you to run, I think it's 32 and uh, or 30. Don't hold me to that, I'm a little tired. So it'll say that weight. And I'll suggest what you do. But generally when these machines generically come out of the factory, they're running of uh, a 46 weight hydraulic oil, all right? And they'll try to sell you their brand, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, this is what you can do. Uh, so we talked about the engine oil. We talked about the hydraulic fluid. And there is, don't judge what's coming out of this because this pot here, I know it looks nasty as hell, but it had, had rear end fluid in it. All right. So it, it's dark and nasty and yucky because it had garbage in that. I use this one size container because it fit perfectly. Slides underneath there. You're gonna look straight underneath this, straight down underneath, and you're gonna see basically a half inch plug. Now this plug is magnetic. And it does have a little bit of, through the years, a little bit of garbage on it, but you just clean it Clean it really well. You know, you want, whenever you're doing anything around hydraulics, clean anything around, clean your bucket, clean, clean everything that you're going to be pouring the fresh fluid in. You don't want to get any dirt in the hydraulic system. So you're doing like in a sterile environment. And then you're going to say, well, how much do I put in? And I'm almost looking. On the 252, this doesn't unscrew off. It pulls off. And it even says, and let's see if we can get this to focus. I don't know. 
focus, focus. It'll say those two lines. One will say full, the other line will say add. So that's where you put the hydraulic fluid in. So this is a mag has a little magnet on it. This will go back underneath. Make sure you do that before you even think about this. Trust me, it's happened to the best of us. Forget to put the plug in and watch the new hydraulic fluid or oil go out the bottom. Oh, isn't that nice? Put that in. Allow this to drain for a good 15 minutes. By the time you get that off, the, the, the filter off, the plug out, let it drain. By the time you open up your new bucket, I think it takes about two and a half gallons to go in there. So a five gallon bucket, you got spare to where if you break a line somewhere, you're all good. Okay, so I buy two quarts of oil and I'm not sure the exact spec on how much oil, but and another thing when you change your oil, all right, you always put a little fresh oil around the rubber gasket on the filter, put the filter on, okay, make sure that your motor is level. That way you can judge your how much fluid's in it, okay? And when you think you got, when you take off and you check the dipstick and all, that's the oil fill there. And your manual will tell you where to fill. And your manual will tell you where to drain. You know, I mean, I know some of you guys are scratching your head and said, well, once again, who would know? There's the drain right there on the bottom. On a ZT, Oh, and I don't know on the SGs, on the ZT and SG40s, they'll drain in the same areas at the bottom. You'll look at it and you say, well, well, it's the bottom of the block down there. How could it, if the, and it'll have, it won't have a plug, it'll have, it'll look like a socket hole, but what it is is a three, where you could put a three, three eighths extension right in it and spin it out. That's, that's the little new mod they put on stuff. On the Bridger and Stratton Vanguards, I don't have one in front of me. It's, it's basically all the same stuff. Same thing you're going to do. You're going to now remember these filter numbers I gave you. That's for that's for the, the engine oil and all. That's for the colder. All right. I want you to remember that. I'll put those numbers down uh, in the description if you want to order them or whatever. But that's for the color. Now, the hydraulic filter, it's for 252. It should be the same for the 222, but I don't know on the 292, the newer model. So that's something if someone in the group, like I said before, knows it, post it up there. You know, post the numbers up there, chime in, uh, put it in the comments if you know it. It just helps people. That's all I'm here for, you know. Um, oh, remember on that list that I bought everything for 12 bucks? I got a high grade, let me turn, I got a high grade Wix filter too. I didn't go for the simple Chinese one or whatever. I went for the higher grade one. You know, I mean, especially on your fuel injected engines, remember that, okay? This is not fuel injected, this is carbureted. But here's the filter that was on it. This one's made in India. So, I mean, it was only $2 something cents. I know you can find them very cheap on eBay, but, you know, spend it to buy the best filters. I mean, that's the life of the machine, the best filters, all right? And the oil, the most important thing is change the oil. And hydraulic fluid. When should you change the hydraulic fluid? Uh, at least in these machines, every season. You know, come wintertime, drain it all, put it in. You know, the, the five gallons of hydraulic fluid is, it costs me, I buy it at anywhere from 35 to 50 bucks at, at a farm supply place. You know, it goes up and down with oil prices. But... You know, I always have some in case I break a line, so you should too. All right, so anyway, that sums it up. I hated making this video. I hate draining hydraulic fluid and all because it's just nasty. No matter what I do, it gets on my floor and I got to use oil dry, blah, 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 you know. Anyway, remember, if you're not learning something new every day, you must be dead. God bless you guys, and I hope this helps a new guy somehow, some way. All right, because... After you do this once, now you're a professional. Have a good one, guys.